this video, we will discuss understanding and recognizing challenging conversations. First, let's discuss what makes a conversation challenging. Yeah, so a challenging conversation can be anything where there's a barrier between you and the person that you're talking to that's stopping you providing the service that you want to provide or causing a miscommunication between the two of you. I guess it could look like um, perhaps the person that you're interacting with is becoming distressed and you're experiencing that distress as well and that's interrupting your um, engagement with the person or Perhaps they're getting angry um, and it's hard to communicate or share the message um, that you're trying to communicate with them. It can also include discriminatory conversations. So is the person you're talking to discriminating you or are they discriminating a group of people? Um, and is that hindering your ability to converse with them? Yeah, it can also involve the person you're talking to not understanding the service or job that you're providing, maybe wanting you to provide a service that you can't provide, um, or coming back to you again and again or not wanting to disengage with you. And it can also look like more technical issues like miscommunication because you're on the phone um, and technology is not working or things like language barriers as well. And there may be other things, um, but overall it's really thinking about what is that barrier and am I able to um, be on the same level or be an equal with the person that I'm communicating with. How can you tell when you are experiencing a challenging conversation? Yeah, so there's a couple of ways we can spot if an interaction that we're in is challenging or difficult. One of the ways might be how we're reacting to someone and another way is how the person we're talking to is acting or reacting. Mm. And you might see that acting out in a few ways uh, physiologically. So, you know, maybe thinking about what is our body doing? Are our palms becoming sweaty? Are we feeling a little bit shaky? Perhaps the tone of our voice is impacted. So we're really thinking of what is our body doing, what is our voice doing, and also thinking about the emotional and psychological impacts that that can have. Yeah, and maybe the person we're talking to, their voice is raising, or they're trying to get out of the interaction, or they've started using personal language towards us, or they're really distressed and upset in a situation, and that's how other ways we can spot if a chat interactions particularly challenging. What are some of the things you need to keep in mind when you are experiencing a challenging conversation? Yeah so something that we like to think about is remembering that the person we're talking to is the entire person they're not just defined by their behaviors that they're displaying in the moment and thinking about why they're coming to us um, as a person and what issues they want us to solve. Yeah, so we like to think about this kind of approach at Why as person-centred, where we're really thinking about what is the person's priority, um, how do we identify what their key needs are, and then what is it that we can uh, respond to within our capacity and job description. Yeah, and something else we like to think about is the possible trauma that someone might have experienced in their life and how that might influence their behaviour and shape their lived experience. So are they coming to us and responding in a certain way because of the trauma that they've experienced? So thinking about not what is wrong with someone, but what might have happened to them. So at why we call this uh, trauma-informed care, so we're thinking about how their past experience of trauma may shape their behaviour today. So really thinking about where uh, is that behaviour coming from? What, what's informing their response? And sometimes people um, respond angrily because that's um, how they respond to their trauma. And we also like to approach these interactions or conversations thinking about the person's strengths as well as the strengths that we can offer them in our role. 
So not just thinking about problems or issues, but also thinking about what resources we have at our disposal to help someone, and also what resources they have in their life that can help them in their situation. Yeah, and so we call this strength-based care. So we can do further um, training in strength-based care and um, teach ourselves how we can respond by recognising the ability that a person ha has and the ability that we have um, responding to those difficult situations. And another thing we like to think about is how someone's identity can give them a lot of power and privilege in the world or less power and privilege in the world and also how their identity might influence the way they act and the way we respond to them. Yeah. Um, and this is called intersectional feminism, but it's also thinking about how one person can have multiple identities. So for instance, you might have a person who is um, identifies as an LGBTQIA person, but they're also uh, a person with a disability. Um, so how does this person um, respond to um, situations in the world and perhaps what is a person's experience in comparison to someone who perhaps is LGBTQIA+, plus, um, but isn't disabled? So there's differences between identities and one person can have multiple identities. They also shape some biases we have about people. So what's informing our responses and what's informing their response about us?